Okay, boys, welcome back to Riemann Sums. The, the slides that we're about to do are not in your notes, so I'm just going to need you to take really good notes for this. Most of the time when you see a Riemann sum, it, you, they will not give you a function, but what they will give you is a table. So that's what we're going to look at now is how to find a Riemann sum when given a table. Now remember, what we're doing, the Riemann sum is an approximation of an integral. So that is why the problem says estimate from 1 to 12 f of x dx using a left Riemann sum with five rectangles. I also want you to notice that my x values are not um, spaced equally. In other words, between 1 and 4, there are 3. Um, the width is 3. Between 4 and 5, the width is 1. Between 5 and 7, the width is 2. Between 7 and 8, the width is 1. And between 8 and 12, the width is 4. So each time I take a different rectangle, I'm going to have to use a different width. So because we are using a left Riemann sum, we want to take our y value and multiply it times the width of our rectangle. So the first one would be my y value. Since I'm using a left Riemann sum from 1 to 12, I'm going to start with 6. So my height is 6 and my width is 3. Next, I'm going to use 8. So I'm going to use the y value of 8. And because I drew my rectangle between 4 and 5, my width is 1. Then I'll go to 9. And between 5 and 7, my width is 2. 12 between 7 and 8, my width is 1. And 13 between 1 and 4, uh, between 8 and 12, my width is 4. Now, notice I did not use 15 because I'm doing a left Riemann sum. So I start at the left and I'm moving toward the right. And these are the widths of each of my rectangles. So now what I can do is I can just find these values and add them up. So this is 18 plus 8 plus 18 plus 12 plus 52. And adding these together would give me an approximation. So I can say the approximate value from 1 to 12 of this function is this sum, um, 8, 16, 24, 26, 28. If I add this wrong, then you just, you know how to add, so don't, don't judge me. 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. So I got 108. That's the approximate value, the approximate estimate of the area under this curve. All right, let's do a different example. Now we're doing a right Riemann sum. So remember, if I'm doing a right Riemann sum, I like to start from the right. So I'm going to go, my first rectangle will go from here to here, and then here. They're getting smaller and smaller, aren't they? Okay, so because I'm doing a right Riemann sum, I'm going to start at 15. And from 12 to 8 would be 4. Then I'll take 13. And then from 8 to 7 is 1. And then I'm going to do 12. And from 7 to 5 is 2. 9. And 5 to 4 is 1. And then 8 well, is 3. <clears throat> Notice I didn't use 6 this time because I'm doing a right Riemann sum. So that would give me 60. 13, 24, 9, and 24. So the approximate area under the curve from 1 to 12 of f of x dx is equal to oh, 8, 17, 20, 8, 10, 12, 13, 130. Again, if I added that incorrectly, go with it. <laughs> All righty. So that's how we would find a right Riemann sum using rectangles.
Now, using a midpoint Riemann sum is a little different. Uh, notice with the midpoint Riemann sum, I'm saying we're going to use three rectangles. So this is how we choose our rectangles. From here to here, because we have to have a middle point, is one rectangle. From here to here would be my second rectangle. And then we'll get a yellow one. This would be my third rectangle. So my midpoint would be 8. 12, 15. So, because I, I said use three rectangles, I've used three rectangles. So, this first one, our y value is eight. The width is two. Because I'm going from five to one, and that's not two, that's four. Come on now. That's knew what I meant. So, that would be four, five minus one. The next width would, the next point I would use is 12. And the width of that 12 would go from five, from five to nine, which would be four. And the last one would be 15. And the width, once again, is four. So um, that would give me 32, 48, and 60. Again, if I add these wrong, um, just go with it, 10, 13, 14, 140. So the integral, the approximate integral from 1 to 12 of f of x is approximately 140. Okay, so that's how we would do a midpoint. Oh, I had put the little rectangles there. I knew I had some of that there. Okay, now we're not going to do trapezoids just yet. We're going to learn how to do trapezoids tomorrow. Oh, there we go. It's going to do it anyway. All right, now this is in your notes. This is in page five of your notes. And we are going to see what a, a these show up often on the AP exam. Just about every AP exam um, on the AB side, you will have one of these questions. So I just want to make sure that we could practice as much as we can today. Um, so th this is an example of what you would see. So we want to find a right Riemann sum. Notice we're only going from 0 to 35. We're doing a right-hand Riemann sum. So we're going from 0 to 35. So we start at, uh, we start at 35. And our first value, our y value is zero, and our width is five. I think, no, I was about to say our width is five for all of those, but it's not. So we're going to start at zero, and our width is five. The next one would be 15, and our width is 10. And then 30, and our width is 10 again. And then 20, our width is five. And then five, our width is five. Okay? And I think I did that right. 150, 300, um, five times two is 10, 100, and 25. So adding all of these up would give us our answer. I think it's 575 if my math is correct. So that would be a right-hand approximation. Let's do a left-hand approximation. A left-hand sum, we're going to, I'm going to start at zero. So my y value is zero. My width is five. My y value is five. Uh, my width is also five. My y value is 20. My width is 10. My y value is 30. My width is 10. My y value is 15. My width is 5. So that's going to give me 0, 25, 200, 300. Oh, what's 15 times 5? Uh, 
Yeah, I'm going to have to use calculator for that. I know. It's pitiful. It's an indictment on the American education system right there. All right. So what is that? That's 100, 300, that's 600. So they were pretty close. Now, for the midpoint, I had to change it to two intervals from 0 to 30 because I have to have a certain number of rectangles to do a midpoint. So this is right. This is left. And this is midpoint. Um, so for midpoint, what I have to do, let me turn my phone off here. Okay, so for midpoint, what I have to do is I have to go from zero to 30 and I have to make two rectangles. So my first rectangle will go from zero to 10. Notice the overlap. Then my second rectangle is gonna go from 10 to 30. And I'm gonna use the midpoint on each of those. So my midpoint is five, my y value is five, but my width is the difference between 10 and zero. So that'd be times 10. Here my width is, my y value is 30. My width is between those two. So from 10 to 30 is 20. So I get 50 plus three times two is six. So 600. So it's not too bad. We see that they're all coming in rather close to each other. Okay. Now, this last thing is use the data to find the derivative of 25. Now, to find that derivative, we're going to go back to what we did in unit two. To find that derivative, I am simply going to find um, two numbers between, I don't have actually 25. I have 20 and 30. So if I find the slope between 20 and 30, I can estimate the slope at 25. And to do that, what we're going to use is the is what we call the difference quotient. And what they want to see on a test is that you're using that difference quotient. So since I am looking at a rate, when I find this derivative, it's going to be an acceleration. So I'm finding um, the difference between, I'm trying to find it at 25. So I'm going to use these two points to find the slope because the derivative is just the slope. So what would that be? That would be 15 minus 30 over 30 minus 20. So 15 minus 30 is 15 over negative 15 over 10. So my slope would be negative 1.5. And what would be the units for that? And this is, what do we call this? R prime of 25 would equal to negative 1.5. And my units would be gallons per minute per minute or gallons per minute squared. Okay. So that's it for this video. And um, I think that's it.